let's look at an example of spectral decomposition. First, we review the spectral theorem for real symmetric matrices. So, we're going to have our standard inner product on Rn. A is going to be an n by n matrix with real entries. And we have the condition that A is symmetric. So A is equal to A transpose. The spectral theorem states, all eigenvalues of A are real, and there exists an orthonormal basis of eigenvectors for A. The second statement is equivalent to saying, there exists an orthogonal matrix P, such that P puts A into diagonal form. Now, lurking in the background of all this, we have our eigenspaces. In this case, our eigenspaces are going to be orthogonal subspaces of Rn. So, that's just a simple argument when we assume we have two distinct eigenvalues. By our second statement, we have a base of eigenvectors for Rn. So, we can write Rn as an orthogonal direct sum of our eigenspaces. If we consider how A acts on each eigenspace, we can write A also as a sum. So, for each term here, P sub lambda is going to be the orthogonal projection onto the eigenspace for lambda. On that eigenspace, A acts by multiplication by lambda. If we take the sum of all of these, we're going to get back A. So, that's our spectral decomposition. Now, to clarify some items here, for P sub lambda to be an orthogonal projection, I need two conditions. First, that P sub lambda squared is equal to P sub lambda, so that's what it means to be a projection. To be an orthogonal projection, we also need P sub lambda equals P sub lambda transpose. Then, because we have an orthogonal direct sum here for Rn, if we take the sum of our projection operators, we get back the identity. So, what we're doing here, we're going to take our identity, we're going to pull it apart into projection operators, we're going to put in our eigenvalues, and then we put everything back together, we get our A. Finally, when I have distinct eigenvalues, if we compose our projection operators, we're going to get zero. So, if I project down to the eigenspace for lambda, if I take the projection from that space down to the eigenspace for mu, we expect to get zero. Now, final note, okay, we have the spectral theorem, spectral decomposition. What does spectral mean? Well, the definition of the spectrum is just the set of eigenvalues for A. So, what we're doing here is we're taking A and trying to rewrite it as a sum in terms of the eigenvalues or the spectrum. Now, the model to keep in mind, let A be equal to the diagonal matrix, one, two, three. A basis of eigenvectors is given by the standard basis. So, we have R3 written as an orthogonal direct sum of eigenspaces. The associated projections are given by these three matrices, each of these matrices is equal to its square, and they're each symmetric, so each is a projection operator. Now, the sum is equal to the identity matrix, and if we multiply any two of these, we get zero. Finally, I can write A as a sum of products of an eigenvalue with its associated projection. So, that's our spectral decomposition in this case. In general, how do we get our projection operators? We have a formula for that. So, P sub lambda is defined as the product over all eigenvalues mu, not equal to lambda, of A minus mu i divided by lambda minus mu. In the numerator, we have a matrix, a linear combination of A and the identity matrix. In the denominator, we have a number. So, 
piece of lambda is just going to be a polynomial in A. Okay, so it's a linear combination of powers of A and the identity matrix. Now, note, we can rearrange these factors in any order that we like. So I want to observe what happens with one of these factors applied to an eigenvector for lambda and an eigenvector for the eigenvalue that goes with our factor. So on V sub lambda, we're going to get V sub lambda back. On V sub mu, we're going to get zero. Since we have an eigenvector basis, that tells me everything I need to know about P sub lambda. So that's how P sub lambda works. On the eigenspace for lambda, it's the identity. For all other eigenspaces, it's zero. From that, we get immediately that p squared is equal to p, and that if I take any two p's for distinct eigenvalues, compose, we get zero. To see the property that we have an orthogonal projection, I want to show that p sub lambda transpose is equal to p sub lambda. Well, if we look at our definition, that's going to follow immediately since a is symmetric. a is equal to a transpose. Using our formula, let's find the projections for the following matrix A. Once we have those, we can find the eigenspaces for each eigenvalue. Now, the characteristic polynomial of A is equal to lambda cubed minus 36 lambda. So our eigenvalues are 0, plus or minus 6. We can verify two of these. Because our first two rows are the same, we have non-zero vectors in our null space, so they will be eigenvectors for eigenvalue zero. So that checks the zero. Then, the sum of each row is equal to six. So we're gonna have an eigenvalue of six. We can use the eigenvector one, one, one to verify. Now, we have our formula here. So let's compute our projections. Now, for P0, I'll have a factor for 6 and minus 6. For P6, I'll have a factor for 0 and minus 6. For P minus 6, I'll have a factor for 0 and 6. If we work out each of these products, okay, we get these three matrices. I'll leave it to you to check that the square of each matrix is itself. We can see that each matrix is symmetric, so P is equal to P transpose. If we take the sum of our matrices, we get the identity matrix. If we take the sum weighted by the eigenvalues, we get back our original matrix A. Because our eigenspaces are one-dimensional, if we apply a projection operator to any vector, if something non-zero comes out, That'll be a basis for our eigenspace. So take P0, I'll apply it to the vector 2, 0, 0. OK, nothing special about that vector. Just taking the first standard basis vector, multiplying by 2, so I get integers to come out. We get 1 minus 1, 0. I want to check the eigenvector property. So I'm going to apply A to 1 minus 1, 0. Out comes 0, 0, 0, which is just 0 times our original vector. So that checks the property of having eigenvalue equal to 0. For P6, again, I'll just apply it to a multiple of the first standard basis vector. So 3, 0, 0. That gives 1, 1, 1. I apply A to 1, 1, 1. We get 6, 6, 6. So we have an eigenvector with eigenvalue equal to 6, which checks our projection. Finally, we have p minus 6. We apply this to 6 times the first standard basis vector, 6, 0, 0. We get 1, 1 minus 2. I apply a to 1, 1 minus 2. We get minus 6 minus 6, 12, which is just minus 6 times our original vector. So again, we check our property for having eigenvalue equal to minus 6. 
So that checks our projection. 